Less than five hours stand between the historic meeting between President Donald Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. So what is at stake when the two leaders finally meet? Joining me now is Oklahoma Senator Jim Inhofe. He's a member of the Armed Services Committee. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Are, are you nice all, to be with you. Are you all hearing anything different than what you're seeing in the media about how this meeting is going so far? I mean, I understand the formal part of it hasn't begun yet. But in terms of the planning and the reception and that sort of thing, what are you hearing? Well, I'm hearing something different than you hear on the news. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm so convinced that things, good things are going to happen. It may not be the first meeting, but let's, let's stop and realize what this... Uh, what Trump has done, he's got this guy's attention. No one else has ever gotten it before. We had a meeting where we had our intelligence people in, the, the director of national intelligence, the, the uh, military intelligence. They said this isn't going to work and all, everyone's so negative on this thing. I believe it will. I, I, I happen to be in South Korea when uh, Kim Jong-un said, I've got a button I can press, I can blow up an American city. And when his response, our president's response, just laid it out and said, oh, you try that, we'll blow you off the face of this earth. And he understands that we have a president who does things. Look, remember the, the Syria problem that we had back during the, the previous administration? He said, you cross the red line and, right. and uh, something's gonna happen. It didn't happen. With this yeah. guy, it happens. Kim Jong-un knows that. So you were in South Korea when he made that response because that's one of the things that critics point to saying that he's erratic at one point he said he's gonna you know and, and saying that it, it wasn't the rhetoric that got us here it was the sanctions but you you are, are saying no, something very no, different. I think I, 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 I do because one of the things he did if you remember Kim Jong-un a matter of hours after uh, our president made the statement he called down to South Korea and said, I've changed my mind. We're going to send our, our athletes down there to participate in the Olympics. Mm -hmm. And then he, he made the gesture of getting together with them. Look at the things he's done. He's released three Americans. He's uh, destroyed uh, one of the nuclear test sites. And uh, they've had the joint exercises. Remember, Kim Jong-un used to always complain about the joint exercises. Well. They're doing them. So yeah. I'm expecting big things. And as I told our intelligence in an open meeting, I said, I think you're wrong and I'm right. I'm expecting big things to happen. This president, President Trump, I think he's playing oon like a fiddle. So what would constitute big things in your mind? I mean, what would we hear tomorrow, for example, when it ends? I think the, uh, a verify a, t a conversation, not a done deal, but a conversation on verifiable denuclearization and also an understanding that we're going to leave troops there even if a deal is reached. Now, obviously, that's something that has to happen because the troops would not be there for North Korea. They'd be there for more yeah. China than anything else. Um, it, one of the things General Jack Kane said earlier today that one of the reasons why he believes the same that you do is that Kim Jong-un has been on a diplomatic blitz, uh, you know, like you haven't seen him before, that he's really changed his behavior in terms of being out and around and trying to talk to people and be visible. Um, do, you, do you agree with that? Have you, do you feel like you've seen oh, that? Oh, I do. Yeah. First of all, I didn't know he already said that. And I, I normally do agree with him. Uh, I feel strongly about that because, again, the reaction that he was getting just minutes after that conversation was one where all of a sudden, I mean, Kim Jong-un is a bully and he uh, he understands a bully when he's talking to one and he, a bully who has demonstrated clearly that if he says something, as our president has done, if he yeah. says it, he's going to do it. And I think that I think that was the turning point at that time. I think that's why we're going to get a good result. It may not be immediate, but this look, yeah. they're talking. Yeah, you know, that's that's exciting. Senator, thank you. We appreciate your time today and hope you're right. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa.